um, and congratulations on, on the offers. So really, we're, there's going to be a couple of us speaking today, just introducing ourselves and the service. Um, so before I get into too much, I think, Sean, you are going to get us started off um, and then I'll come back to the, the outline. Thank you. Thanks for that, Ashley, and good afternoon, everybody. And as Ashley said, my name is Sean Delaney, and I'm the Registrar and Vice President for Academic Affairs here in Marino Institute of Education. And first of all, I want to pass on the apologies of the President, Professor Theresa O'Doherty, because Theresa had intended being here to welcome you as well, but she got called away at the last minute, so she's not able to be here. So she asked me to convey her apologies that she couldn't be here to, to welcome you. But I certainly want to welcome you on behalf of the President, on my own behalf, and on behalf of all my colleagues here in Marino Institute of Education. You really are warmly welcome to be coming part of our community here in the Institute. Um, I hope that your years here, your four years of your degree will be happy, fulfilling for you. And I think that college is just a wonderful time in your life where you will meet new people, experience new freedom, more freedom, uh, encounter new challenges and gain greater independence. You will learn about differences between secondary school and college in terms of attending classes, meeting lecturers and studying efficiently. This might be easy you know, making the transition from secondary school to third level is a little bit easier in Marino because of the size and the scale of the institute. We have 1,300 students here, so it's possible that some of you went to secondary schools that were even larger than that. But uh, at the same time, there still are some differences that you will find in making that transition. Um, technology is also likely to play a large part in your life here take part in clubs and societies that are part of the community. I also hope that you will learn a lot professionally during your time in MIE and that after graduation you'll be able to work as educational professionals in fields of your choice. I hope that your disability will give you particular insights into how you can create uh, an inclusive educational environment when you begin your careers in education. I'm also confident that we will learn from you during your time here. Please let us know about any barriers you encounter during your time or how we can do things better, because we are uh, an education institution that is committed to learning, both for you and for ourselves. Our goal is that you can complete your course in an inclusive environment with reasonable accommodations to, uh, in place for our classes, for your personal study, for placement and for assessments in line with your disability. There are many supports available to you in MIE as well, and you're going to learn about some of those this afternoon, but I want you to be aware of others that exist that will be available to you during your time here as a student. Uh, first of all, every single student has a personal tutor. This is a member of the academic staff who is assigned to you, who you can contact to talk to about any concerns, or anything that's going on in your life that may have an impact on your studies. And I would encourage you to keep in touch with your tutor during your time in the Institute. We also have an access officer, Louise Condon, who is here this afternoon. And Louise is supported by the members of the Disability Service in Trinity. And you're going to meet some of them later on this evening. Ashley, you've already met, and Declan and Courtney. Um, we have a chaplaincy service here in the Institute, led by Lily Barry. Uh, we also have an agreement with Fairview Medical Centre to provide health services for you while you're in the Institute. You're entitled to three free visits to the service and provided you just need to show your MIE student card. Um, we're also setting up a new counselling service on campus and I'll have details for you about that in the coming weeks. There's also the Students' Union, and the Students' Union, uh, who's represented, is, is Ellen here? Yeah, Ellen's at the back of the room. Uh, this, uh, Ellen's the president of the Students' Union this year. She's on our Education Studies programme, and there is also a welfare officer and an education officer, and there are supports provided for students through the Students' Union. So I encourage you to call on these supports during your time in college. And finally, remember, of course, that you also have your fellow students 
friends and families who are available to call on for support as well. So I just wish you a wonderful four weeks and you're very welcome here this afternoon. Thank you, Sean, for, for the welcome. So I suppose just to give uh, an oversight of what we're going to cover, you'll be meeting the rest of the disability service team um, and we're going to just talk through how the service operates practically and gain an insight into some of the supports that we offer. And then we're going to hear from some students. So Petra is one of our, our current students, uh, Courtney, who is the disability service uh, student intern, and then Alan from the Students' Union, as we've mentioned. So. I suppose just to introduce ourselves, I, I said before my name is Ashlyn Claffey and I'm a disability officer but I also work as an occupational therapist in the service. So I do provide one-on-one -on -one support to students who are registered. Um, and then Louise Condon is the access officer who you'll meet in a second and I'm going to just hand it over to Declan Trainer to give us just a brief overview of the service. Um, Declan is Director of the Disability Service across Trinity College and Marino. So Thanks. there you go. So, as Sean said, um, it's a small college, but it's got a big reach. Um, the highest number of disabled students in a teacher training college in Ireland. So they're doing a really good job of being inclusive, and it's a really important message to send out to everybody that Marino accepts and, and wants to support all students that are coming to college here. So we have a service lab agreement with Marino. Marino is an associate college of Trinity. So there, we have a very strong connection in many ways, but we also provide the supports of the disability service that are required of the students here. So we're going into our 10th year of that, and it's been working very well. And every year we just keep building on it and try to add new supports as, as they are required. So um, the numbers look low, but as I said, these have the highest numbers of students in any teacher training college. So it's a really, or, a, or education college in Ireland. So it's really positive um, to see that. And there's students registering all the time for support. And as Sean said, tutors and different people will refer people to us to, who need support. And they're on all of the courses in all of the years, postgraduate, undergraduate and um, students come from all different types of uh, backgrounds and disabilities so most of them um, are all listed here but like disability mostly is an invisible thing to most people so it's only visible for a small number of people and um, but the majority of students you'll, we that we support will come in under that category of hidden or invisible but it doesn't mean it's any less in, important so the supports is a very clear system. You just have to do everything through a thing called Maestro. I don't know if you've been introduced to that yet, but that's the student portal system. And you'll get information on that when you go into your orientation. And you just have to apply for supports through that mechanism. And once you do that, um, we then get in touch with you and uh, carry out a needs assessment. We put in supports and we produce a report that's called a LENS report, which stands for a learning education needs summary. It's like a passport. It outlines all of the supports that you need, that you've specified and that we have worked out together. And, we, and then that goes to your course. So it's a very streamlined, very easy and efficient system. It's really up to you. Like you need to let us know what you need. Like we'll, like I mean, typically we'll prompt you and give you some ideas about things that have worked for other students or whatever, or, or if we can think of things that you mightn't be able to think of because you're in a new environment. But typically somebody like Ashley or myself will we'll meet you and we'll help you and you've got access to us via Louise at any time or to your tutor or whatever. So it's a fairly clear um, mechanism. Do you want to take over? I think Louise is going to just talk us through the registration and things like that now. Um, basically, as Declan said, every student gets a Maestro account, which is the Marino um, student um, system. And, um, and with that, then, that's where you register for the disability service. When you register for the disability service through your Maestro account, it'll send an alert and we will then get in contact with you. I'll get in contact with you and set up a needs assessment meeting. As Declan said, 
you know, you'll know what you need. And as you, a needs assessment is kind of a living document. So throughout your course, there'll be different stages and different needs that you'll have at different times. Or as you're doing it, you'll learn more about how you are within the environment, within your course. So those needs might change. And if they do, it's just a case of getting back in touch and we can have a, a, an update meeting or we can just add something to your needs assessment. And again, that information is disseminated to the lecturers that are on your course and that are linked to you or related to you. And they'll all be on your Meister account. So, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. So that's that's really what I was saying, that you're just through your needs assessment meeting, we'll have, um, you'll have access to your supports. And again, people sometimes start off on saying, oh, I don't need those. It's as well to put them in place. And then if you use them, you use them. If you don't, you don't. But at least you're giving yourself a choice from the beginning. And from the outset, that's the most important thing. Um, If you, if you're, when you're joining the, uh, the disability service, you might have, uh, you might be coming in with stuff that you have used throughout your education so far, that you've used through, and they might have been very individualised. With going into higher education, we will try and make you independent, because at the end of the day, we're trying to evolve the student to be able to go out into the workforce. And sometimes if you've had a person sitting beside you writing your notes or taking notes for you or that type of thing, you're not going to be able to bring them with you into your job. So we will work with you throughout your education here to get you in an independent stance to walk out into the world. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, so the plans report is for anybody who's going to go out on placement during their, their course, we'll meet up with you, Ashling again, we'll set up a meeting with Ashling, and she'll discuss what, what supports you might need when you're out on placement. And it's again, that's another living thing, because when you go out on placement, you'll, you'll find things that will be different with the school, with your access to the school, and with how you feel doing placement. And that's something then again that you can check back in and if your lens needs to be updated with additional supports that can be put in place at that stage but again it's something that they will connect it with you from the beginning and it will just kind of move along with you through your course yeah thanks Irene. and um, so that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect once you register you will be contacted and asked to meet with the disability officer which will most likely be myself um, and that we have that meeting as louise has said so it's a good idea to just reflect on what was previously helpful but also to consider what the demands of the course are going to look like because it's going to be a new environment with different demands and we might be able to look at you know supports suiting that environment so reasonable accommodations are what we call those supports that we can put in place um, and I suppose some examples of those are things like you know being allowed to record your lectures maybe using an assistive technology device maybe receiving your handouts in advance but those are things we can talk about in detail once you meet for that one-on-one -on -one needs assessment the lens report and the plans report were mentioned so so Declan referred to the lens report as your passport to disability supports and I suppose that has to do with the communication of the lens report so whatever the reasonable accommodations are that we decide upon we document those on the lens report and then with the student's consent that is shared with the relevant staff in the department and the student's individual tutor that Sean mentioned earlier. Um, so that's something that we organise, you know, if the student is happy to share with the department in the needs assessment. This is just an example of what the lens report might look like. So depending on the information that the student is happy to be shared with the department, we can add that in there. And then we have a section where we clearly outline what accommodations the student is going to be requesting. Just in terms of this disclosure piece then, so I suppose once a student has done the lens report based on the needs assessment, if they are happy, we go ahead and send it to the department once the student has approved the lens report. Sometimes that can be a decision that the student has to consider. I suppose the benefits of sharing the lens with the department are that you then can receive the reasonable accommodations and the supports. 
if the department aren't notified, unfortunately, they're not able to provide the support. So it's just about considering what supports you need and then deciding how to disclose from there. Uh, but naturally, if you have more questions about that, we can discuss that in the needs assessment meeting. So I've spoken a bit about the reasonable accommodations and there are additional supports then through the disability service that you can receive. So those are kind of the one on one individualized supports. I'll talk you through some of those now. Um, so I mentioned occupational therapy and I myself work with an occupational therapist in the service. So you may or may not be familiar with what occupational therapy is. Um, it's a healthcare profession and essentially I meet with students one on one to provide support to them in managing their disability on an everyday basis. So I do have good insight into how various disabilities can impact somebody in college, managing the college demands, things such as transitioning to college, getting settled in, you know, learning to communicate with professors in a more independent way. Um, so I'm there to offer practical one-on-one -on -one support to students developing those skills and overcoming any challenges that they are facing. Um, so this just gives you an insight into some of the areas we might cover. Um, it's very individualized, but generally it can be things like managing your mental health, communication skills, um, specific support for preparing for the placement site, which I'll speak about again in, in a few minutes. So this is occupational therapy. Assistive technology then is another support. Um, so Andrew Costello is our assistive technology officer and he can meet with students one on one. Usually it's a once or twice off meeting just to pair a student with the suitable assistive technology depending on their needs. Um, so things like note taking support, using software to record the lectures and write your assignments if that's something you find challenging. Um, learning how to touch type, you kind of move a lot from, you know, handwritten notes into the use of a computer as you come to college, um, and then also voice recognition software that <coughs> is required. Um, academic support then is another support. So we have um, an educational psychologist within the service called Alison Doyle, and she is available to meet with students one on one if they are requiring quite intensive academic support. So things like learning, you know, good academic writing skills, developing a study timetable, um, and more so in the later years, perhaps with managing a dissertation or a thesis. Those are the types of areas that Alison can cover. So with these one on one supports, if it is something that you think, you know, a couple of months down the line or even, you know, come third or fourth year that actually, you know, maybe I should go back and link in with one of those, you just contact Louise um, at access at mie.ie, that's our email, which is coming down at the end if anyone needs to take a photo or write it down. Um, and those supports don't have to be in place from first year, they can happen at any point. So just don't hesitate to come back to us. So just a note then on placement supports. Um, I suppose in Merino, many of the students will be going on professional placements. So as a part of their course, they might have to go into a school um, and complete a school placement module. So this might be the first time that a student is going into a working environment and a professional environment. So that can be a bit of a transition in itself from you know, the lecture halls and the classrooms into the kind of practical field experience. Um, you know, some students can find it a bit daunting and they might find that, you know, they have additional needs out on placement that they don't actually have within college. So there is an opportunity to come back and discuss with your disability officer how you're feeling about placement. If you think there are other supports you might need, um, you know, for example, a pre-placement visit where you just get familiar with the setting. So those are things that we can look at and organize for you. So in terms of arranging that, again, just don't hesitate to come back to the service through the email. We can set up a one on one meeting and if needed, we can move through the levels here where we do reach out to the school placement site to have that communication piece supported as well. Um, so I'm going to stop talking for a minute and let the students come on up. So I think we're going to hear from Petra first. Um, so Petra, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself if you want to make your way up. I can move the slide when you just tell me. So good afternoon, everybody. You're all very welcome here, and I hope that your time here in Marino is just as memorable and um, lifelong as mine is so far here. 
So I, if you may be wondering who am I, so I'm Petra Doherty, I'm 24, I'm a chair student in Marino, and last year I graduated with my law degree. But after doing my law degree in Gibber College Dublin, I felt, oh, the law isn't for me. So I went on to do education studies here in Marino. So here I am today, and I do hope to uh, become a career guidance teacher and help students, help pupils like us, help us get to the fullest they can in an educational setting. So the disability that I have is I have cerebral palsy in the form of plastic diplegia. So that means basically in basic terms that uh, my mobility is affected. So let's say it takes me a little bit longer to walk to class or someone brushes past, by, past me quite quickly. I mean, I may not be able to maneuver as quick or that, but um, the thing is though, that when you have a disability, you don't let it define you. And even though I'm 24, you know, I've had to live with a disability for a very long time. And with your family networks and with your friends, you're able to overcome it. And I suppose coming here to Marino was probably going to be very daunting. So you're probably thinking, oh, it's a big campus, how will I get here? But the thing is that everyone in Marino, between the lecturers, uh, your tutors, the counselling service, <laughs> the student support services, the academic services, we're all here to help, so never be afraid to reach out, you know, and I suppose nothing is impossible, like I suppose for people with disabilities, the thing is that things just become challenging, they're not impossible, because once you put your mindset to it, you can do anything, absolutely anything, just once you have self-belief in yourself that you can do it, no matter how long it takes you, at the end of the day you can do it. Uh, the support services that I have used and I find very useful is the assistive technology one with uh, Andrew Costello. He's very good uh, at coming up with all the different things. And one of the one of the note-taking apps that I used was Glean, and I would highly recommend that because the thing is that it allows you to take notes as you go. So once you attend another lecture, you can just put in your notes again, and it keeps it up for you like on a cloud. Another service that I have ended up here was the um, student support services. So that means the SU, student union, or the counselling services, which are very good also. And then as well as that too, then I went and I went to talk to my tutor. Uh, even though we went virtually, it was actually very, very nice to meet with them and touch base. And in a few weeks time, if you, you know, when you settle in, go meet your tutor for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and just kind of get to know them on one on one. Because as I said already, like everyone here in Marino, they're here to help you. know, and I suppose when you're thinking of transitioning to uh, secondary school to secondary school to uh, third level, it can be very daunting. But just remember that education is a platform where barriers can be broken, and nothing is impossible just once you put your mind to it. And I suppose on a final note, if I may, I'd like to say that like don't let your disability hinder you throughout your life, especially when it comes to seeking your third level education and seeking what you want to do with your life. Because the third, because everything that is offered here in Marino, is, it enables you, it doesn't inhibit you. Everyone's trying to enable you to do the best you can and to find the best degree that you can, that you can go out into the workforce to do. And I suppose lastly, I'd just like to say, don't, don't let your disability disable disable you, pardon me, but let us enable you. And I suppose when it comes to having an education and being in, a, being in an educational setting with a disability, you might have the disability, okay? And sometimes, you know, I get up in the morning and think, oh, oh God, I don't really feel like going in. But I look at myself in the mirror and I take a few deep breaths and I close my eyes and do a bit of meditation. And then I think, I am who I am. My disability is part of me. It makes me who I am. It, you know, it makes, it is part of me. So don't let your disability inhibit you from getting what you want. You know, and, and, I, and I, even though I'm in year two in education studies, regardless of what course you guys are doing in Marino, if you, if you want to talk, just come to me and I can chat with you. But just at the end of the day, everyone, just do the best you can and don't let your disability inhibit you from getting where you want to go because there's lots of back doors. Thank you.
So I'm Courtney and I'm the graduate intern for the Tr Trinity Disability Service. So this slide is just about the Trinity Ability Co-op. I might give a bit of an overview of my time in college. So I'm a recent business and sociology graduate in Trinity and I'm profoundly deaf, so I wear bilateral copper implants. So just to give a bit of an overview of say the sports that I got, I had a note taker from second year to fourth year of my time in college. Louise mentioned about, you know, just because you might have that support in first year doesn't mean you can't come back and then get that in place because I realised after my first year that I really did benefit from a note taker. So definitely do come back to the disability service if you do need any more supports. But this slide is about the Trinity Billy Co-op. So a big part of my college experience was getting involved in college, get involved by students' union and get involved in clubs and societies. So I think that's really important for students with disabilities in general because that you learn a lot of things outside of the classroom, such as developing any kind of skills like teamwork, project management, um, leadership. So this is just about the co-op, as I mentioned, so it is a cooperative movement of students with disabilities working towards radical inclusion. So we are a new movement and we were set up in May 2020 during the pandemic. And one of our first projects was actually about um, students with disabilities uh, feedback on online learning because it was very an uncertain time. We didn't know was everything going to be online, would there be say closed captions on Zoom or Blackboard, that's the platform we use. But um, that got a really good reaction even from lecturers and they did take that on board. And even since since it's only been a year now, we've actually have achieved so much. And some of the projects that we have been working on is a guidelines for clubs and societies to be more inclusive for students with disabilities. So uh, all the information on that is even transferable to to even staff when they're developing their uh, uh, lecture material and it's also um, students unions can also use that. So yeah and then we also have a short film project you might see that on the co-op social media when you follow it so if you scan the QR code you can also join the co-op but there's also um, the trailer for the short film and it'll be released on the 24th of September. But that's just a bit of an overview. And especially because a lot of our projects, we do try to have the same mixture. We're going to try and do a mixture of hybrid, so online and in person. So that would be uh, ideal for the Marino students to get involved because we have an information session in two weeks. So if you do scan the QR code or you can uh, look up Trinity Billy Co-op on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. You'll also find more information there. And yeah, so it's a, just a good way of even getting to know other students with disabilities. Um, I know I've learned so much from working with other students with disabilities that, you know, you learn just how they've experienced being a student with disability in college and it is very different to my own so I found it very beneficial and just in terms of developing skills I would highly recommend it. Um, I don't know if well, I just have one more thing. Um, also I'll be hosting a student development and engagement drop-in on Fridays at 12 to 1. So this can be found on the disability service website so this especially if you just don't know maybe how to one for class rep or you don't know what's the first step to get involved in college. This is just something that I think will be, you know, it's only a 15 minute chat and I'll be able to kind of guide you through what will be the first step to do that. So um, you, can, you can book an appointment on the website. If you look up Courtney McGrath, I'm pretty sure there's a booking link there. So I'll, I think Alan's next. Yeah, I'll just check. Does everyone know who wanted to scan the QR code, how to do it? You just take a photo yes. on your phone. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So students from Marino are allowed to join the clubs and societies in Trinity as well. Yes. yes. So sorry, it sounds like a bit of a plug, but I know we haven't <laughs> talk about uh, the wonderful things in Marino as well. But you are able to go to the things in Trinity. There's lots of clubs and societies. I know they have them here too, but we have a load, hundreds of clubs and societies as well. 
Sorry, I'm not plugging Trinity this time. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that you are able to join me. <laughs> Sorry. No, but just, uh, that, that's a really good point that you make. Because for a long time we were asking if, if Marina students could join the Protestant Societies in Trinity, and they weren't sure because of the public identity tours, but they did clarify for us that yes, every student in Marina can join the Protestant Society. So it just means that there's a much broader number of Protestant Societies available to you. So uh, because obviously, you know, we have smaller numbers, Trinity has larger numbers, so yeah. no matter what you're interested in, there will be a club uh, society for you. So um, I'm Ellen, I am this year's SU president, and um, so I am on the uh, studies course, I am third year um, this year, and um, so I will be taking the role of the SU president. So the SU in general, um, we have been full SU at the moment, but um, we work kind of as a team to represent students across the whole college. So being the president, I kind of, uh, I'm the first point of contact and then behind that I'm a whole team of people who we all work together and we make students are represented and get the best that they can in the college. And um, so the SU office is uh, located in the Nagel Rice building and it's beside the gym. There's a little sign on it, the cute little sign that says SU office. So if you are looking for us, we will have that open and um, throughout the year during lunch breaks and stuff. And you can pop in and have a chat with us. And um, if you need anything, we usually have free stuff as well. So if you want to say hello to us. And um, so we represent GE, we look after student life and um, kind of behind the scenes. So we organize events, workshops, nights out. Um, anything really that is a social event. So we have a Christmas day in December and um, November, December, and we kind of like everybody wears Christmas jumper and we like, take out the Christmas tree, it's quite nice. Um, and we have Christmas dinner and um, we have Freshers Week, which is, you know, COVID guidelines pending, gonna go ahead. So we'll have a few events on campus for the students, kind of stuff to like integrate people. One of the goals that the SU have this year is to get students back into student life because everything was online. Our biggest concern is it is quite overwhelming now that we're back to be in front of all of these people and to have to talk to people face to face. You're like, oh God, like person. And to make sure that when you go next year, it's just seamless. Um, so we will be holding a few events, and if you have any concerns or worries about them, do come and talk to us, and we will keep you updated on what's happening. And if there's something that you want to see that you see online, or you see another college doing it, and you're like, oh, that looks good, do come and say to us, and we will do our best to organise it. So one of the things that the SU is organising this year is in with Dr. Colleen is the community mentoring project so this is run by Trinity and um, I did it last year and um, as an NCD student because I went to a desk school so uh, what it does is it takes students who came from different access routes in college so people who didn't purely just go CAO compliance in Dun Dusted it takes people who came from different backgrounds and even if that means that you had supports in school or you know you came you're a mature student you came from the here access the there access and it takes you and you go into schools and who are in similar situations and it is quite nice because those students are look at college like oh well, i can't go to college and i'm like well why like what's the reason so it, it's nice for them to see the representation in the college so anyone who is interested in doing that when you get yourself in get settled you can email me on the su president and um, email or you can email uh, Colleen horn herself um, and there's just a little link. It is quite nice. So you do a training session um, on, it was online, hopefully it'll be in person this year. Um, and then you go out to a school and mentor them. And it is quite nice because anyone can do it. It doesn't matter if you're on the BA course or not. I was on it studies and I did it. So it's, it's a nice little flavor of what it's like to be teaching as well. And you go through activities and stuff with them. Um, and that runs, there's three different dates. They're all, there's one in, November, there's one in January and then finish up in March um, and yeah, putting in stuff so it is quite nice. So that is something that we are doing like from the SU point of view to, to raise awareness about access and stuff in college. Um, and other than that, if anybody needs anything, I'm your bridge between like the, the students and the, and the staff. So if you need anything and it's like one of those moments where you're like, I actually don't know who is in charge of this, you can come and find me and I will do my best to find out or I'll be able to tell you, listen, this is who you go to or this is what you do. Um, and we're kind of here to support you. So if you need anything, you can come to us and we will do our best to help you. And um, the sport is a sports officer, her name is Amy, um, and she will be able to guide you with any support. So on Marina, we're big into the GAA. So we have commode teams, football teams, um, 
think there's a hurling team as well. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if you want to go to do anything in Trinity, you can do that. If you want to come to us and get us to find out the information, we will do that. You can contact Trinity directly. They have hundreds of clubs and societies. There's there's so many of them. So whatever your interests are, there will be something there for you. Um, and yeah, if you need anything, even if you want a private campus tour or something like that to settle you in, let us know. We'll do our best to help you out. Um, but yeah, we are here for you and you will see us running around the place like magic. So don't be afraid to come and say, listen, I don't know where I'm going or I need this or I need that. And we will do our best to help you. Okay. It's important to say that next week there will be just your college induction, and in that you'll have an awful lot of information just to do with the the day to day of the, the college and how it goes, and the different um, supports that are available to you on a broader scene. So just you, you will have that next week. Okay. Um, yeah. So don't worry about remembering every little bit of information I suppose today. <laughs> Um, and I suppose just on one of the last notes, in terms of disability service and communication with parents, um, it can be understandable. Parents probably have a lot of questions um, and are looking for a lot of information. Um, you know, today we're obviously here to answer some questions. But in terms of our service provision, the student is our main focus, and how we can best support the student is in a trusting a relationship with the students themselves. Um, so we will always prioritise engaging with the student one on one around any queries or issues or challenges that they might have. Um, that's not to say that we absolutely will not speak with parents. Um, you know, if, if, if it is a general question and it's not you know, related to your student, to your son or daughter, you know, we are happy to provide you with that general information. Um, but I suppose if parents do contact us and are looking to discuss something you know, in particular about their student, we will have to go to the student first themselves. We do encourage parents to support their students to make contact with us themselves and that's kind of the, the best approach but there is a confidentiality waiver that we can, um, I suppose that's a route we can go in contact with parents about the student um, but in terms of data protection the student will need to fill out that confidentiality waiver and return it to us so we know that we have their consent to, to then go forward and communicate uh, with the parents. So there is a link, I know I can't just give you the, the guide here now today, um, but it is up on the Trinity Disability Service website, just a guide for parents if they have questions or are wondering how they can best support their son or daughter going forward in college. And this email then is the, the email where you can get through to us if you do have questions or if any of the students are hoping to, to meet with the OT or the Assistant Technology Officer or just forget how to register already or anything like that, just contact access at mie.ie and we will get back to you there. Okay. So I think that's everything. Um, if anyone has any questions, they're, we're all here to, to answer them. Um, anything jumping out at anyone? This is where the silence is. Yeah, <laughs> <that's> it. <laughs> We'll be hanging around anyway yeah, we'll for be, we'll the next while. Oh yeah. So Sean, maybe you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we we have them already. So um, but uh, we can. Uh,